Howdy folks and welcome to this first episode of Season 2 and yes, the Sharks are circling and our players are walking out the door. Probably our best player, Harry Dixon Balls, is on the move to Melbourne City. And Regis Quifa, this one surprised me a little bit, but he is going to be heading to Bangor FC. And Wet Farts, our left back, is going to be heading to PSG, but thankfully we will be getting him back on loan until the end of the season. And the man himself, Dick Splash, will also be heading to Melbourne Victory after turning down Sydney FC. And it's not only the players that are leaving, but our assistant manager, Lucas Neal, is also taking a head coach role at Darwin Rovers. Never gonna give you up. That's bullshit. He's on his way to Wigan. So, Astley out the door as well. I did have to get that Rick roll in before he left us though. Sorry, folks. In better news, however, we have signed Nick Doff's brother Pierce to replace Dick Splash up front. And we've also signed a winger, Josh Barton, to help us out on the wing, just to give us a bit more depth. So now we are looking at the first round draw for the Tim Cahill FFA Cup game. So this competition pretty well covers all the teams in this save. So there is Humpty Doo playing at Cairns in the first game. And we're going to head over there right now. And looking at the side, you can see that the boy that can't be named is up front now that we've lost Dick Splash. And you'll also notice that UPAC has actually joined us as well. He's another defender that we've signed in the offseason. And it's also good to see the new boys, Josh Barton and Pierce Doff, on the bench for today. So I'm sure they'll see some action. And of course, Bill Wilkins has taken the place of Harry Dixon Balls, who has left us for greener pastures. So just waiting for the boys now as they warm up on the field this will be a good test for us first game of the year just to see how these new players work out and off we go first highlight of the game Zars puts it through the boy who puts it over the bar only 47 seconds in and already one shot on goal so it's Zars to cross it in there and the ball has gone harmlessly over the net but the boys are showing good intent so far two shots after a, a matter of minutes there's Fisher with the ball now holding it up just getting his attackers in line there. There's our new signing, new pack there. Two farts there, and he's passed it through the Zars. Held up by Wilkins and pushing it back there now. And there's farts again down the sideline, trying to give Zars an opportunity. Crosses it in, and there's the first goal of the season to the boy. Well done. 1 0 after seven minutes. Again, so farts really glad that he was able to stay with us for an extra season on loan as Zars puts it across there and boys there and he's unchallenged with the header. So great start for the boys and boy celebrating his game as captain with a goal straight up. So four shots to one at the moment but uh, we're looking pretty solid at the moment. Lam Stuffer has the ball there for Cairns and they cross it in but Fisher is unchallenged there. Takes the ball without any real pressure on him whatsoever. Holds the ball up, passes it back to Beans there and there's Giorgio. And uh, Kerr putting it forward again, finds Boy. Can Boy put it away for two? He has. So 2-0 after 14 minutes and he's already got two goals for the season. So great start for the new captain of today as Mustafa takes a kick off now to Grunewald there and back to Tonna. And they're trying to push forward there, but there is plenty of hubby do defense there. And Fleaballs has put it back into attack there, although he's been uh, dispossessed there. There's Farts there, crossing it back to Zars, and who puts a big ball through there. There's Wilkins, holding it up slightly, putting it in, but can't find the man in there. And Cairns have actually got the ball back, but Toskokov putting, putting it through, and there is Boy with his hat-trick. So three goals in 16 minutes for Boy. Really great start to the season, and again, this is a great start for this competition as well. Remember, this is a knockout stage, so... Well, they're all knockout stages when it comes to the FFA Cup, so... Doing very well. Eight shots to three currently. Beating the team on the board and on XG as well there. But it's uh, Cairns now trying to attack there. There's Grunewald there, putting it out to Conta. Holding it up, trying to find someone in a better position, but has to push it backwards. There's flea balls at the back, cleaning up the mess for Hope You Do. Georgia puts it through, but not really finding anyone forward there. And we're just sort of going a little bit backwards and forwards here at the moment. There's Kerr with the ball, 
and he is trying to set Boy away again, but dispossessed. The flea balls has it now. There's Wilkins there, and the goalkeeper does it a little bit well there. I think he's managed to deflect the ball. It's still a corner, and Kerr's going to take that for us. Crosses it in now, but the keeper has no problem. So well done to O'Brien there. A very good save. So it's nine shots to three after 33 minutes. Boys have really established themselves. And I think they're just uh, managing to hold firm here as we look to half time. But there's Kerr with the ball, holding it back. There's Tosakokov putting it back to Beans. Giorgio there holding it up to Flea Balls. Back to Giorgio, putting it forward to Kerr. Kerr showing good speed there, and it's Wilkins, but he puts it over the bar. So O'Brien for Cairns is going to put it out from the back. About three minutes of regular time before half time here. There's Farts back to Upac there, and there's Wilkins, and he manages to chip it over the keeper. I'm not sure whether the keeper got something on that, but uh, Wilkins was well in control. And that's four goals before half time. Really good start to the season, and good cohesion shown by the boys already, despite the fact that we do have a few new players there. But of course, we do still have a lot of good core players from last year to hold the side together. There's Flea Balls. Pushing it through to Kerr. Kerr to the boy. And again, that is goal number four for him. And goal number five for the team. So Cairns have been shell-shocked here. The last two minutes, we've scored two goals. And it's 5 nil just before half-time. Beans and Fisher nearly come together there. But uh, all worked out okay. There's Wilkins putting it forward to Kerr. Kerr has, holds it up there. And Boy has an uncharacteristic miss. They're hitting the post. There's Tosakok off now with the ball as we head into half time. So 5 0. Great effort for the first half. And we're looking at making the subs. So the new boy, pissed off, is coming in for the boy that can't be named. Four goals in a half. I think that's more than good enough. And the Nigerian Prince email scammer is going to come in for Tosakokov as well. So there's Wilkins holding it up there in the second half. There's Giorgio holding it up as well. Just waiting for runners to get into place there. There's Kerr. And Scammer puts it over the bar. Not a bad effort for his first shot in anger. O'Brien from the back for Cairns. Trying to find a way forward there, and they've actually managed to get it forward, but there's no one there to receive the ball. And there's Scammer there to Farts there, and Zas putting it through there. Doff is on the way. Can he get his first goal for the club? Yes, he can. Well done. So, Doff is a player that we picked up from Jabiru Joey's last year. So, they had a middling season, but he still scored... I think in the top five when it came to goals. So really good effort for him there. And his first goal for the club in a matter of minutes. So congratulations to him. There's Wilkins now with the ball, holding it up. And there's Giorgio looking for the cross here. Can he find his man? He does. And there is Doff for number two. So he's going to be very happy with his choice to move over. Hunt to do already in a division above the team that he was with. And now it's 7-0. The boys are doing this in a canter at the moment. And there's Kerr there, putting it through to Zars. Zars putting it through to Scammer there, and Scammer to Wayne. Kerr gets his first goal of the season. So it's 8-0. It's a cakewalk at the moment. So the FFA Cup first round seems to be more than finished here, even though there is still half an hour left on the clock. Atkinson for Cairns throws it in there, and they try and push it forward. But Farts is there to clean up. Here's Giorgio. Making some ground down the track there. And there's Kerb crossing it in. And it's been cleared by the Cairns defence this time. And once again, they're pushing it forward there. Now, they've got a little bit of space here. But it is Beans who's out sprinted the attacker there. So back to Giorgio. Putting it forward now. There's Wilkins. And can he do anything there? He's just been pushed wide there. Now, I think that's just a poor miss on his part. It was a bit of a challenge on him, though. And we are going to make our final substitution of the game. Actually, we've got two, I think. Um, so, Cleveland Steamer is going to come up. I don't know if you remember, but he was one of our promising juniors from last year. Hasn't had a lot of first-grade experience, but he is actually being put on the field there. And we're looking also to bring Bannerman on and for Giorgio. So remember, Bannerman is still our club captain, even though he's not getting as many minutes as he would probably like, but there is healthy competition in this club, that is for sure. So it's Cairns pushing it forward there, and it is a 
can't remember what his name is there. And it's Forster trying to push it through, but uh, Fisher is able to make the save without too much problem there. So 20 minutes of uh, regular time left. And there's Mendes with the ball for Cairns. Trying to hold it up a little bit. There's Bug Eater pushing it through there. And crossing into Foster, who's on the board. So Stefan Foster has got the first goal for Cairns. They'll be happy with that. It's always good to get your first goal of the season. But this has been a very one-sided affair. Renovald has just picked up a yellow for Cairns as well. That's not going to do them any favours there. You pack pushing it forward there. And it is Moffat back to Ham there. And then we're pushing it through there to uh, Pujish. I don't know how to say his name. There's Grunewald putting the ball in. So despite his yellow card, Dylan Grunewald gets the goal. So it's 8-2 now. So the defence has probably just gone a little bit shy here. They need to probably be picking up their game a little bit. Although at 8-2, they're in, in no danger of losing this game. There's Bannerman pushing the ball through. And it is fielded well by O'Brien. So no pressure on the keeper in that instance. Holding the ball up, looking to try and get people in position. Goes route one down the middle there. Can he find anyone? Uh, Steamer has the ball, pushes it through to Kerr. Kerr to Doff. Can he get his hat trick? He has got it in the goal, but I believe he's offside. Yes, been disallowed. Fair call by the ref as we go into five more minutes of regular time. Hands with the ball, they're pushing it through there. And Forster looks like he's got goal number three for Cairns, 8-3. I think that's his second. There's Mindy's crossing it over. There's Bannerman at the back. Fleetball's pushing it forward there to Doff. What can Doff do here? He's, he's taken on the defence and he's running through them like they're not there. That's really well played. Pushes it right back there to Farts though. And Farts holds it up for UPAC. Pushing it through there. And there's Grunewald again. And he's found Forster who's had a really good game for them. There's Bug Eater pushing it forward to the right winger there. And then he's pushed it back to Grunewald to Foster again. Atkinson pushes it forward there and it looks like Foster has got his hat trick. So it's 8-4. So four unanswered goals from Cairns. So despite our, our domination, they've actually come back quite well. So it's a little bit disappointing from a defensive point of view as Grunewald tries again. There's Mindy's to Grunewald to the right wing again. It's the only reason I say right wing is because I can't pronounce his name, so forgive me for that. And we move forward there. There is Grunewald again. So it's all cans at the moment. Four, un four unanswered goals they've scored, and they're doing well, although Kerr has the ball for us now. Puts it way into the crowd there. It was not even close. Uh, so we're just in the injury time now, and we've come to full time. So it is 8-4. Not a bad effort. Always good to start off with a win. And remembering we played some new players on the uh, from the bench today. So good for them to have a bit of a hit out. So looking around the grounds at some of the other results, there's a few teams there that you may be familiar with from last year's save. Adelaide River unfortunately went down 2-1 to Kalgoorlie there. But it is good to see Alpa Rulam get a win on penalties over the Gold Coast Stars. Excellent result for them. And hopefully they'll actually do well and maybe even join us up in this tier next year even though hopefully we won't be here and of course Alice Springs Uluru was a team in our division but they've gone down 2-0 to University of New South Wales so looking at the draw for the next round of the Tim Cahill FFA Cup we have drawn the Loftus Butt Pirates in a home game so that will be a good match remembering I don't know if you noticed but they did actually win New South Wales Division 1 last year so they are actually moving quite well and looking at the draw for the Coca-Cola Cup, remembering that that's the competition that we went down in the final to ECU Jundalup last year. We've actually drawn Lincoln City Raiders away. Interesting to see how that game pans out for us because we have high expectations on that competition. And in further tragic news, MacArthur FC have also signed Frankenbeans from us. So another defender bites the dust. And not only have they signed Frankenbeans, but they've also taken Phil's ass off us as well. So MacArthur's going to have a pretty decent side next year, but that is really going to leave us a little bit short on the wings. So we might have to look into that. And the hits keep on coming as Wayne Kerr has agreed terms with the Melbourne Knights and they've just been promoted to A-League. So I'm sure he'll be a real asset to that club. But of course, again, another winger down. 
So we are a little bit short on staff at the moment. And despite all the uh, exits from the club, we are still considered to be favourites for this competition. So I guess we'll find out. Last game we actually had a few of those boys that have left. It's really going to be interesting to see what our side looks like in the next match. To mitigate some of the loss, we have signed Jesse Foster from our old nemesis, Adelaide River. And uh, he's going to come across and play for us. He's pretty well an emergency backup because we do actually have other players that could, probably could step up into those roles but we want to make sure we've got someone to cover that so now it's time for our first round game in the foodland central championship against seaford rangers away so here's our new formation now we're going with two up the front with pierce drop our new signing uh playing with the boy that can't be named up front. Midfield, we've still got flea balls there. Wilkins still at attacking midfielder, but our wingers, Eric Shen, who did actually play for us last year, but he was definitely an understudy to Wayne Kerr there, but uh, he's gonna get his opportunity now. The new signing Barton's also gonna start off for us on the left today. At the back, we still have our familiar backs, Farts and Giorgio. But Shuma Fat, who did play for us last year, is starting. And then also Upac is actually going to be partnering him in the centre there. Fish is still keeping for us. But on the bench, we also have Steamer, Bannerman, Foster, Nick Doff, and our new signing once again from Adelaide River, that bitch. And as we wait for the players, as they warm up on the paddock, away game today. The kickoff has happened and it's going to be Giorgio who throws the ball in now. Puts it over there but it's defended easily by McLaughlin. Jimmy Fats there though and it is Doff getting another goal. His third of the season is 1-0 in the second minute of play. Really good effort there from Mathad as well to actually set that ball rolling there. As we see it again, Giorgio throws it in. It doesn't go to anyone in particular there but it was good hustle there from Mathad and that's a great header and then Doff is raising above the pack to put it away. So it's Wilkins with the free kick and he puts it into the bar there. It's actually not a bad effort there. The keeper didn't know too much about it, but uh, fortunately for him, it actually was pretty safely put away in the end. So there's Giorgio crossing it in again and there's Doff with goal number four of the season and it's 2-0 in the 13th minute. Excellent start to the game. Especially since we do have a few new faces there, but the cohesion seems to not be a problem whatsoever. Pierced off is actually fitting in like a hand into a glove. Not a problem at all there. Excellent goal. So already on top of the ladder there as Tumor Fat puts it back to Farts and then Farts the flea balls. He pushes it through there. Keeper cleans it up without a problem. But it's Upac putting it straight through there. There's Wilkins putting it through to Barton. Crosses it in and boy, it's the third goal of the day in the 19th minute. So, Seaford have been shell-shocked, just pretty well like Cairns were in the, in the uh, FFA Cup game. So, I guess we've still got a good core of players from last year that have actually really stepped up since the other guys have left, and the boy that can't be named has actually put that one in. 3-0, excellent start there. As Strickland throws it in for Seaford, and they are on the attack there, and Moon has put it over the bar there. And Fast throws in now, there's Flea Balls, crosses it in there, and it's Boy again, 4-0. Sixth goal of the season already in the 26 minutes, so this is a cakewalk, this game. The way things are going, we'll probably try and rush through this season a little bit, because we do want to get to uh, at, uh, FM24. So I'll try and um, get through Season 2 as quickly as possible, but I also want to show the development of the players, so we'll make that judgment as we come, but obviously you don't want to see too many whitewashes in the competition, so we'll work on that as best we can. As it's Seaford with the ball there, putting it through there, and Moon has a shot and puts the ball in the net, so it's 4-1. So they'll be very relieved to put the ball in the net had four unanswered goals and they've really struggled defensively. Still a better period of play for them, although we're throwing it in there now, crossing it in, and boy, heads it over the bar there. So 36 minutes, 4-1 still. Doing it pretty easy at the moment. There's Upac there, the tuna fat, and then flea balls pushing it through there to the boy that can't be named, crosses it in. He's deflected by the defender and cleaned up by the keeper this time. Just waiting for half time now as the defence seems to have settled down a little bit for Seaford but the damage has already been done. It's 4-1. 
and into the second half. Not much happening at the moment. There's Farts there, throwing it into Barton, crosses it in there, and then Shen. First goal of the season for him, and 5-1. He'll be happy with that, considering he's had the big step up to a starter this year. Expecting big things from him. He's actually a very talented young player. Got a lot of height about him too, so he's really going to win those uh, challenges in the air. But uh, yeah, looks like another comfortable game for us. 5-1 currently as the cross is coming from Giorgio. But they've safely defended it as Farts with the corner crosses it in there. And it's headed over the bar by Doff as we've got to make some substitutions now. And it's going to be that bitch on Fortuna Fat there. And then Jesse Foster, the new signing, is coming onto the left midfield. Also going to bring Steamer on for Wilkins, give him a little bit more game time now that the match is pretty well out of reach, I would suspect, as the keeper puts it back there, but it's pushed forward. And there's Foster with the ball now, holding it up, putting it back to fast there. Flea balls, holding it up for Doff, and Doff puts the ball in the net. His fifth goal of the season. And it's 6-1 after 70 minutes. So it's still 20 minutes of regular time to go here. And the game is all but one. So there's blue balls. A really good ball there. Good vision to see Doff there. And Doff just beats the keeper pointlessly. Keeper had no idea there. But to be fair to him, he had no support either. There's blue balls again pushing it through there. Um, and there's Shen. Trying to cross it in, crosses it in, and it's just been put wide there by the attacker. And there's Foster again, but McKee gets the ball back for them, and there's Burbridge pulling it back to Clitoris there. Clitoris holding it up, crossing it in, and it is defended very well there. And then Moon has a shot, but he just puts it wide. Fisher from the back puts it to Upac there, crosses it to that bitch, and then he puts that forward there, and there's, there's Cleveland Steamer there to Foster. Foster pushing it forward there, trying to find Pierce Doff again. Can't in, at this particular point in time. Strickland for Seaford. Puts it through to McKee. He's trying to cross and find Moon. He does, and Moon is... Is that a corner, or is that a, just a bad shot? Doesn't look like it. And just heading into injury time now. Moon for Seaford, holding it up there, looking for some sort of redemption there. Dembele crosses it in there. There's Burbridge there to Easton. Easton has a long run shot there but it's not going to challenge as the, that bitch has the free kick push it forward there. Trying to find Shen but cannot do that and it's back to the keeper and that is full time. So 6-1 is a very comfortable win and looking at some of the other results there it looks like Mars Bar Sugar could be another one of the challenges this year they've had a 6-3 win Adelaide Galaxy also had a 4-1 win so these are the sides that we probably should be looking out for Port Darwin 2-0 and the Tiwi Islands are in the top five there as well with a 3-2 win over Elizabeth. Unfortunately for Adelaide River, they have gone down 2-0 to Port Darwin and they've actually had a player sent off as well. But again, it's only round one, so we don't really know what that's going to look like this year. Interesting to see why Ella Wanderers is in this competition. We actually beat them quite comfortably in the Coca-Cola Cup last year. I think it was 6-0. So again, we, we should do quite well in this league, although we don't have the same personnel as we had last year but we still have a good core group of players there anyway we're going to leave it there today folks and hopefully we will see you in the next episode if you like the content please like and subscribe and we will talk to you soon bye bye